Sports Team presents your Southern Tier Kickoff. What's up? What's going on? And welcome in once again to your Southern Tier Kickoff. Thank you for joining us and starting your Saturday morning right here on WBNG with myself and the rest of the 12 Sports STK team. And we're going to get right into it. Guys, how are we doing this morning? Doing good. Let's let's talk football. Let, we're, that's what we're here for, a half hour of it for sure. I mean, Kyle McCord, Heisman talks, they came and then they... Whose pick Go again on. was it for wow. Kyle McCord? I can't remember. Wow. Who was it, it? it was mine. Early. It, it, was, mine. it <laughs> was mine indeed. <laughs> if we're talking about picks, there was five of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to get into that in just a minute as well as we will highlight Syracuse's uh, game the other night on Thursday. But before we do that, we're going to start off with Penn State and the Nittany Lions. And Penn State looking not to have a letdown here as they get ready for next week's game against Ohio State. But before that... They have a matchup with Wisconsin. Kevin, what can, Kyle, sorry, what can you tell us about that game? And the Nitty Lions make their return to the gridiron after having their second bye week of the season last week. And Penn State is looking to keep the momentum rolling for the last half of the season. In their nail-biter win against USC two weeks ago, Penn State pulled off in OT, but that wouldn't come without a scary first half offensively from the boys in blue and white. Aller threw for 391 yards and two touchdowns, but he also got picked off three times in LA, which was the first time in his college career he threw a pick on the road. The Trojans also shut down Penn State's running game, keeping Singleton and Allen to 26 and 56 yards on the ground. As the Nitty Lions look to the Wisconsin Badgers this week, who have had an up and down season this year with big wins against Purdue and Rutgers, but in an iffy showing against Northwestern last week. Ahead of this week's game, Penn State head coach James Franklin talked about the depth of this year's wide receiver core. Julian Fleming had a huge game for us or two weeks ago, excuse me. Um, there's been games where Omari's been the guy. There's been games where, obviously, um, uh, Liam Clifford has been the guy. There's been games when, obviously, Trey's been the guy. So I think that's helpful, too, that a number of different guys have been impactful and, and making plays for us. And the keys to the game for Penn State this week this one will be often opening up the offense more. They can't rely just on Tyler Warren to have another 17 reception, 240 yard game this week. Second, they need to get the ground game going as it has been the most inconsistent part of Penn State's game this whole season. And lastly, Wisconsin has, isn't a great team. However, you let them stay in the offense can and will hurt you. Penn State needs to step up and play tight man defense this week. So this game's kind of a bit of a trap game this week. I mean, I, I, with Ohio State next week, they might overlook this game and can turn to a trap. I had mentioned that as we had started. And, I mean, look, at the start of this, when you looked at the schedule, yes, yeah, certainly trap game. You, no one, I don't think, expected Illinois to be 20th in the country at this point in time. But this is the same old, same old for Penn State. Look, they, they've come into this part of the season, this part of their schedule, so many times undefeated. And so many times I'll run into Ohio State, Michigan. James Franklin's got to win a big game. I mean, that's what it comes down to. He's got to win a big game. I think he gets the benefit of the doubt this year because you got 12 teams in the playoffs, and yeah, I do think Penn State's going to be one of those 12, but he's got to win a big game. Do you think it happens today? I do think it happens. The other thing I think, too, is this spread is a little disrespectful, only a touchdown. I could see Penn State winning by two touchdowns this afternoon. Yeah, I agree. I think Penn State uh, can get this done over Wisconsin. They are a team that shouldn't be slept on, Wisconsin, I mean. And I agree with uh, Kyle saying that this could be a trap game. You might want to look ahead to that Ohio State game, that rivalry game. Everyone wants it, but you need to focus one week at a time. Yeah, I mean, like as you had mentioned, you have 3-4. You have uh, a road game here ahead of a home game. So how do they avoid that trap? I think really they just have to trust their offense. And like I mentioned, you can't put all your trust into Tyler Warren. He had a heck of a game last week. I mean, a tight end putting up 240 yards, 17 receptions, absolutely unheard of. You can't rely solely on that. You have to get that ground game going. Singleton and Catron Allen are fantastic backs, but holy, they have been so inconsistent this year. 
They need to find holes in the gap. The line needs to actually hold up for him and allow him to get those 10-yard plays instead of holding Singleton to 26 on 10 carries. All right, real quick, as before we finish up, let's go through and we'll get our picks here. Uh, I'm going to take Penn State, like you said. I think it's a disrespectful line. I think they do win. Um, it'll probably be close, but I do think they win by more than a touchdown. Yep, take Penn State as well. Yeah, I'm going to go with Penn State as well. Six and a half is too low. We'll go across the board. Go on Penn State. You don't get to number three in the nation by uh, just doing nothing. So I think Penn State takes it. Yeah, they've been solid, and their offense has been as well. So let's move on over, though, as we will get you ready for today's game of the day as well. That's going to be coming up at 3.30 on WBNG. And that sees the 20 or the number one team in the country, Oregon, going up against the number 20 team in the country, Illinois. Um, I, I think I made a might have had Illinois in the last game there, but no, that's Wisconsin. Uh, Illinois and Oregon, this one in Eugene. Kevin, what can we expect today? Yeah, well, like you said, Zach, today on CBS, you'll see the number one team in the country. Well, that itself should be worth tuning in. Their matchup with number 20 ranked Illinois makes this one even better. Illinois isn't going to blow you away on offense, but it's a defense that's known for spitting out NFL-level talent year in and year out. They've lost one game this year to Penn State. They're able to keep that one close. Speaking of close games, it's something that Oregon has also seen their fair share of. This game for Oregon looks like their last big challenge of the regular season, as this will be their last ranked game of the year. Win this one, and it should be smooth sailing the rest of the way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that this Big Ten, I mean, I don't think that people at the beginning of the year expected Oregon to be the top of the class. A lot of people had said they got the offense, but that defense isn't there. This is going to be a test of it. I mean, Illinois... They're the definition of what a Big Ten offense is. And, you know, they're going to ground and pound. They're going to run. So I, I think this one comes down to the trenches for sure. Yeah, and I'm going to have to agree with you there. I mean, this is going to be this is gonna be a lot closer than people say. And that 21-and-a-half spread is just – that's kind of disrespectful to Illinois if you're talking about the disrespectful spreads. They're a solid, solid, tough team. They run the ball very well. They put up 180 yards against Michigan, who has still one of the best defensive lines in the country, whether their team's doing great or not this year. That's the most that they've given up on the ground since the TCU game in 2022 when it was a playoff game. So you have to respect that running game that's going to come through. And this is also an Oregon team that, well, Ashton Genke kind of ate up 200 yards on them a couple weeks ago. I know you were talking about Ashton Genty a couple yes, weeks ago. Ashton yes, Ashton Genty has been phenomenal. But for Oregon, I think the number one team in the country, I, the spread is what makes me a little bit hesitant on this, 21 and a half, like you said. It's just a little bit tough for me to, to swallow. But the last time I picked on a huge spread like that, I ended up losing on that one. <laughs> so for me, i got to get some in my picks this week. i gotta, I got to be Connor, our weather guy. I mean, But <laughs> I, I think I have to climb up those rankings. Oregon is the number one team in the country for a reason. Dylan Gabriel, Heisman candidate in the conversations that we didn't really talk about. So I'm going to trust him today and hopefully beating uh, an Illini team. You had mentioned Dylan Gabriel. You had mentioned those Heisman talks. Gabriel, another one of those guys, as we talked about, Cam Ward, who has a chance to actually set the all-time NCAA passing record if he keeps up on this pace. I know he's been at a couple of spots, whether it be UCF or Oklahoma and now Oregon, but he's really finding a home. And we're going to find our picks here before we get out of here. Just real quick, I'm going to go around. I got Oregon today. I think that they cover. I think Oregon wins. However, I have Illinois to cover here. That spread is just way too big. Yeah, Oregon outright, but Illinois is going to keep it a close game. I'm going to Oregon, Dylan Gabriel, so hopefully he can show up. All right, and uh, before we get out of here as well, we're going to let you know what the weather's going to look like in Eugene. We're going to head on over to Connor Thompson with your football forecast right now. The game of the week takes us to the West Coast, Oregon, and in Pacific Northwest fashion here, it's going to be a rainy one and a cloudy one across the day. Your football forecast for the Fighting Illini versus the Fighting Ducks. That's right, two fighting schools here. You'll notice temperatures mid to low 60s by around the fourth quarter, but rain showers throughout. It's going to be a very wet and dreary day in Oregon. Will the Fighting Illini come out on top, or the Oregon Fighting Ducks weather the storm here to figure it out? But overall, it's going to be a wet one. It's going to be a cool one. Hopefully, it's going to be a run-heavy game here as we head on into the fourth quarter. We'll be right back after the break.